friends, welcome back to my channel. I'm Danny, and today's DIY in progress is another episode of Can I Make It For Cheaper? The mini edition. <laughs> so this is a series where I take highly priced decor items and find a DIY solution to dupe it in a high quality way for hopefully one third of the price. At the end, we will do a summary of the cost to really evaluate if I could in fact make it for cheaper. Maybe I can, maybe it's just not worth it, but that is what this series is meant to find out. Now I am calling this episode the mini edition because we are going to be duping a bunch of smaller high priced items that I've had my eye on. Now like they're items that like not necessarily would make up like a full beefy episode, but all together we got one great chunky Campbell soup of goodness. You know what I mean? I'm excited for these projects, but before we get into it, if you are new here, feel free to hit that subscribe button and join this magical Creative Beast community. I share a lot of fun DIY and home projects and sometimes it can get a bit weird and nerdy, <laughs> but we are weird and we are nerdy here. So with that said, let's get into this episode because I'm excited to start duping. Editor, roll the tape. All right, Magnolia, you're up first on the mini DIY chopping block for this Can I Make It For Cheaper project. I'm focusing on this really cool, super unique, phonetic alphabet art piece, currently valued at $918 US, converted into my Monopoly money, it's $1,258.67 buckaroos. I ain't got that money, honey. And I do just wanna say, I usually do user generated projects for this episode, meaning all of you normally pick my projects that we do in these episodes, but I have had my eye on this piece for years. Now it was featured in the Ramsey House transformation on season five of Fixer Upper on HGTV. And it was also featured in Joanna's book, Homebody, which everyone owns, we've all seen it. And I love this piece. I mean, Jeff and I used to actually quiz each other on the phonetic alphabet, like when we were in cars. So it was just like something to do. Nerd alert! So when I saw this art piece, I was like, I have got to have this in my home. And then I went on the Magnolia website, I saw how much it cost and I literally, my jaw was on the floor. Okay, so I have the website here. It says that this is inspired by vintage design, but honestly, I kind of wish it looked more vintage, to be honest. I mean, it's in a frame, so it kind of just looks like paper in a frame. You know, it like takes away that vintage-y, like it's supposed to be inspired by vintage, but I'm like, but what if it was vintage? What if we made it look vintage? I think that's the beauty of DIYing or duping items like this. Take the inspiration, but make it your own and like, let's bring that vintage back into this piece. So I think we should go find out if we can make it for cheaper. Okay, my friends, we are making a phonetic alphabet art piece. Let's go. So what I have in front of me is just a pine hobby board. You can get this at any th like hardware store. It's three quarter inch and it's perfect for making the base to our art piece. I also have these quarter inch uh, poplar pieces. I have two pieces for the top and bottom and then uh, three foot size pieces for the sides, which makes up the perfect three foot size of our board here. And then these just need to be cut down to make our top and bottom. But what's really great about this is this is a inch and a half. And what I'm gonna be doing is kind of creating a small lip around the bottom, just a quarter inch of it, just so that when I do hang this on the wall, um, I'm gonna use picture hanging wire that you don't actually see the picture hanging wire. Like, you know, when you're on like a side profile view of a, of a picture and you can kind of see it, I don't want that. I actually wanna hide it. So by creating this kind of frame that allows me to kind of lift it off the wall, we're gonna diminish that completely. So what we need to do is we need to cut these up. I have my handsaw here and so we'll measure, we'll cut, um, and uh, we'll get started. Let's get started! put the stickers on it and then they're always awful to get off. Yes. All 
All right, so the idea is that there's gonna be a bunch of letters on this, it is an alphabet, but there was two ways I could do this. I could either add the letters, you know, like as like a, a top application, or I could stencil the letters. And I kind of want to go the stencil route. I think it's going to look the most vintage and authentic. So what I want to do is I need to paint this entire thing, the bait, like what I want the letters to be, which is going to be this creamy color. I have this color called Studio Clay. It's like a very warmy, warm white, let's just call beige beige. So I wanna just paint this whole thing with the beigey tone, add my letters that are going to be basically the stencil, then I'll paint the whole thing black and then I'll remove the letters to reveal the, the beigey color underneath. Now we let it dry. I have my dry board in front of us. Now what I wanna do is kind of map out where I want everything to be. So I have two things here. I actually found these like little alphabet stickers at the dollar store for $1.50. Um, they're just really basic text um, alphabet letters and I thought this would be perfect for kind of each alphabet letter that we're gonna be breaking down. So I really just kind of wanna map out where everything needs to be, how big it needs to be, and then we can kind of then move on to placing the letters down. I am gonna use the Cricut to map out the top piece because it is a different font and I kind of want to match the original piece. Um, I think we're gonna use Cricut. I mean, you don't need to use Cricut. There are so many like letter stencils out there at any craft store. So just go wild, go ham. You don't need Cricut to do this. I'm just using Cricut because I have it at my luxury, at my fingertips, so I might as well use it. So we're gonna map out where everything needs to be using math. <laughs> And then at this point, uh, we'll, we'll, start, we'll start cutting some letters and placing letters down and see how it goes. I like the way that looks. So now what we need to do is write out all of the letters, uh, names, and this is gonna take a while. So more montage. How do you spell montage? M-O-N-T-A-G-E, it's montage time. Yes, I had enough letters. <laughs> this is fun, okay. What else do we need? So we'll make the dots and the dashes in the Cricut. And then we're also going to make phonetic alphabet and then international Morse Morse code. What did you say? All right. I got my Cricut here, laptop here. Now we just basically have to start designing. How do you spell montage? M-O-N-T-A-G-E. It's montage time. Shall we start with phonetic? Let's pray and let's paint. <laughs> okay. 
Okay, friends, the time has come. We can lift up the text to see if it worked. Nothing will bleed through. It's going to be great. Nothing will bleed through. It's going to be great. Let's do this. Okay guys, check this out. How dope does this look? I'm so excited about it. And it's like, it's not perfect. Like there is still some smudging. I did try to kind of fix it up a little bit, but I kind of like that it's a little smudgy. Like I feel like it's gonna add to it because once we kind of take a uh, sandpaper to this and kind of make it a little roughed up, I think it's all gonna kind of disappear and it's just gonna really add to that antique vibe that we're going for. But before that happens, I wanna get the frame on so what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna use those two off cut pieces. They're a quarter inch each. I'm gonna put them on the bottom and that's just gonna raise this up enough that I can actually just pop the side pieces up flush um, with that quarter inch raised and then we should be able to pop it in with a brad nailer, no problem. So let's get some safety glasses on, let's get a brad nailer and then let's add our frame and then we're basically done our project. Well, we have some sanding, but we're basically there. I really didn't start this until like 11 o'clock. So, I mean, we did it in less than a day. This is dope, okay. I am so excited. So what do you say? Let's go hang this on my wall and let's see what this looks like in my living room. <laughs> I'm so excited. Well, there we have it, friends. A Magnolia-inspired phonetic alphabet art piece duped and now beautifully displayed in my living room. I love it. And admittedly, it's a little wonky in places. And I think if I did this again, I would certainly strive to perfect my spacing. But all things considered, it looks super antique. And I love how unique and fun this looks in my living room. But in spirit of this series, let's talk the real cost. As a reminder, the Magnolia version was a high-end value of $918 US converted to Canadian. That would be $1,258. Now, pulling out my DIY cost calculator, let's tally this project up. With all the materials I used, minus the tools, this project cost me a total of $91.94. Now, if I remove the things I already had, it actually only cost me $55 to make. But that means I saved a total of $1,166 by making it myself. So if you ask, can I make it for cheaper? The answer is yes, I can. Moving on, West Elm, you're back on my DIY chopping block for our second mini, can I make it for cheaper? I'm focusing on the West Elm mid-century drink table valued at $223 Canadian or $149 US. 
But I gotta say, I really like this small table and I have needed a small table like this in my living room for so long. So as we know, my couch is L-shaped. Uh, so we have these like side tables on each side of the L, but normally I like to sit in the middle. So I never have a table to put my drink down on unless I'm willing to like put my abs into work and like put it down on the coffee table. Yeah, no. I mean, I think this is rad. It's got this really nice wood element. It's got a nice marble top, this brass bottom. Like, I'm feeling it. And it doesn't feel overly complicated, which is what I like. It's kind of a mini project, you know what I mean? All right, but I'm gonna be completely honest with you. This was a project that I've actually already completed. I actually built this into my DIY cozy living room, like get projects done video a few weeks ago. And I just got, it was late. Uh, I, you know, there was just so much happening that week and so many little things, bits and bobs happening that I didn't end up finishing it in time. And then that video was already pushing 30 minutes, so I had to cut it, which happens sometimes, but I really wanted to share this project with you. So I'm putting it into this episode because it really is a dupe and uh, I thought it would be fun to share. So we're gonna go back in time. I'm back in time right now, but we're gonna go back, back in time and, and and dupe this project, this this table. So let's go to this mid-century table and let's do it for less. We are going to do a combination of white cement, just so that we kind of get that modern organic look that I really love with a table leg, which I have here, all wood, and it has that tapered nature, just like the inspo. I have this metal piece, which I got in the plumbing section that I figured we could slide on top to make up the kind of like the bottom half. Now this is silver, but we can obviously make this uh, a brassy tone as we know. And then I went and bought this off Amazon. <laughs> it was so loud for no reason. And then I got these and I thought this would be the perfect mold to make up the tabletop and the table bottom. I also have this silicone mold and I wonder if this would make a good tabletop. I'm thinking maybe if we pour it in this and then we kind of have a unique, interesting shape. So I kind of want to try both though. This could be the tabletop. Let's do up our mix. We'll do some bacon and then we will get moving on the actual like pieces that's going to connect the two together. be a great DIY. See you tomorrow, friends. Good morning, friends. Let's finish this little drink stand, shall we? I haven't even taken these out of their little cake pans yet, but I figured let's do it right now together. So this one, actually, because uh, when it dries, it actually shrinks a little bit, so it's pretty easy to take this out. Should be able to like, just pop this out. Ooh, ooh, that's nice. Very good. It did get a little dent, like indented here, but honestly, that's fine. I don't care. Do you care? I don't care. This one. Oh, that one came out easily. Okay, this one was the one I was literally a little nervous for. I have no idea what to expect. <gasps> Whoa. Good things, maybe. Oh. Oh, this one did crack a little. Oh, that's a, a bit upsetting. You know what? I think that might be salvageable though. Like if I just fill that in a little bit, like the crack is so minimal. That's gonna be a great top. <gasps> and then it can like sit on top of this. Ooh, that's nice. As far as I'm concerned, I think this was a total success. So what I wanna do is I'm gonna sand up all the edges, make this look really nice. And then we will move on to all the other little elements. <laughs>
all. Honestly, this is exactly what I wanted it to be. I mean, as far as things go, I would say that this is a wonderful kind of prototype for what I think could be something much, much better. I think the idea is sound, but the execution was like a little bit rocky. I mean, I don't love kind of like the glue here, which I think could be cleaned up. I'd love to like find a way to kind of fill in this seam here. I would love for this little bottom piece. It has a bit of like a, a whoop, a concave whoop. I don't know what to call it, um, but I would have loved to have fixed that too. But all things said, I think that the prototype, it works, it looks great. I love the molds. I wouldn't change a thing about that. I wouldn't change a thing about the materials that I used. Uh, I, I'm thrilled. I think this looks exactly as I wanted it to. And it stands exactly 24 inches high, which is exactly how high I wanted it to be. And so, hot dog, I think we have a DIY win. It's a good table. So I'm gonna let this dry because this glue is still drying up. I'll let that dry and then uh, we'll put it in the living room and we'll have a drink. You know what I mean? <laughs> Here it is, friends. The West Elm inspired mid-century drink table duped and now a functional furniture piece in my living room. Honestly, this is far more sturdy than I expected and the vibe and style, it just suits my space so well. I I'm obsessed. But in spirit of this series, let's talk the real cost. As a reminder, the West Elm version was a high-end value of $223. Pulling out my DIY cost calculator, let's tally this project up. With all the materials I used, minus the tools, this project actually cost me a total of $236.82. Now, if I remove the things I actually had, my real cost was only $90 to make this, which is far more acceptable. So I would say only tackle this bad boy if you have the basic materials at hand already. But if I had to buy everything from scratch, this means I lost $44.61. In my real cost, I gain $132. So perhaps this is a project that needs to kind of go back to the material drawing board if you have to buy all the materials right out. But if you ask, can I make it for cheaper? I guess the answer is sort of, depending on what materials you have. <laughs> Moving on, Lulu and Georgia, you are back on the DIY chopping block for our third mini Can I Make It For Cheaper. I'm focusing on the Jack Raw candle valued at $360 US and that is $493 Canadian. A $500 candle. Like not today, not tomorrow, not even if I was a millionaire. But I gotta say, she's cute. She cute, you know? Okay, so let me see, how do they break this down? It's a raw ceramic texture. It says, once the candle has elapsed, the pedestal bowl can be refilled with a pillar or tea light candles or serve as a sculptural catch-all on your entryway table. Ah, okay, well it's nice because you're getting like, it's a multi-purpose thing. And I do like that. I like that they're selling something that can be multi-purpose. It's not like you're gonna spend $500, burn the candle, and then you have to throw it out. You get to reuse the piece, and that's a good thing, I will say that. But I really like this candle. I have a huge candle obsession. I have tons of candles in my home. I drop a lot of dough on candles. Actually, a little insider scoop, Walmart sells candles for dirt cheap and like cute candles. I've never actually made a candle in my house for me, um, never. So I thought this would be a really fun way to kind of make some candles, bring in some scents and uh, see if we can do this. Let's see if we can make it for cheaper and let's save probably a lot of money doing it. This is one I know for a fact I can make for cheaper, but just how much cheaper can we make it for? Let's find out. Okay, DIY friends, new day, new DIY. So we are moving on to the Jack Raw candle. Now what I have in front of me is a bowl. I got this for $1.50 at the dollar store. I also got this little um, ceramic bowl. It has some little grooves on it, uh, which obviously is not ideal for what we're trying to do, but I think we can get rid of that um, after the fact. But I picked these two materials, one because this can actually withstand heat. The other one, it's glass, so it should be okay for a candle. Um, you know, if you're just making a catch-all dish, we don't need to think about materials. We can just kind of cover something up and it's fine, but this candle is going to get hot. And I have to keep that in mind when making this candle because I don't want 
whatever, you know, texture I put on the outside to crack or shrink because it's heated up. So it did require a little bit more thinking than just, you know, a usual catch-all dish. So what I have is some construction adhesive here, and I'm just gonna glue these two pieces together, and then we're gonna let that set up, and then essentially we can move on to the next step. good about that. Essentially now we just wait. Okay. I feel like this is kind of set up enough that I can work and move forward with it. So I've been thinking about the type of material that we're gonna wrap this with. And a lot of people I see using kind of just like drywall compound, but because this is a candle and it's gonna withstand some heat, I wanted to find something that was a little bit more heat resistant. Um, and I realized that tile mortar actually can withstand heat up to about 800 degrees Fahrenheit, which is about like 400 degrees Celsius. So I feel like that's probably going to be enough just for a candle. I don't know if there is a better material out there. You guys let me know in the comment section below, but I think that that's going to be just fine for a candle situation. We will see. But what I have is this <laughs> tile porter. This is the same stuff that I use on my squiggly table. So I'm gonna mix some of this up. I'm crossing fingers because it's a new kind of DIY application for me. <sighs> it's gonna be fine. Everything's gonna be fine. a dried candle thing. <laughs> is that a cup or is that a candle? The way that it holds, you know, like a goblet, like it just feels like, anyways. I'm gonna be honest, I have some regrets about this project already. One regret being that I didn't start with a white bowl because as you see, when you look on the inside, obviously it's clear bowl, so you're gonna see that gray. And I was thinking, that's silly because now if the candle starts to burn down, you're just gonna see that gray. I wish I had either spray painted it white, then covered it, or just used a white ceramic bowl. You know what I mean? <laughs> I have some regrets, but I think I can fix this. I ended up finding this Rust-Oleum. It's a high heat, tough protective enamel, um, but it's made for high heat situations. So I think it said it can go up to, protects up to, up to 650 degrees uh, Celsius 1200 Fahrenheit. So I think we're gonna be good to go. We do need to sand this first uh, and make this a little bit less textured. I want it a bit smoother. So I have my sandpaper here. I have my my mask because we do not want to inhale all of these particles. So I'm gonna pop this on and then we are gonna sand this down nice and smooth. I'm gonna be very careful and then we'll sand the inside and then we'll spray it. Very exciting. Let's go make a candle.
friends, our final project, the Lulu in Georgia Jack Raw inspired candle, a duped and now a lovely candle in my home. Honestly, I think this is super cute. It's not perfect, but I was trying to be super aware of using products that could withstand high levels of heat. It definitely suits my home and I'm just really happy with the outcome. I've never made a candle before in my life. But in spirit of this series, let's talk the real cost. As a reminder, the Lulu version was a high-end value of $360 US, converted to Canadian in the current dollar, that's $493. Pulling out my DIY cost calculator, let's tally this up. With all the materials I used minus the tools, this project cost me a total of $84.57, which means I saved a total of $408 by making it myself. Now that is a DIY save. So if you ask, can I make it for cheaper? I think the answer is yes. Well, my friends, there we have it. A can I make it for cheaper mini edition. Honestly, I am shook. I can't believe we weren't able to make one of them for cheaper. I mean, I, technically I was able to make it for cheaper, but then when I actually went to tally up the real costs, I was like, oh my God, this, I can't, you couldn't make this for cheaper if you had to buy things right out. And I'm sure there are cheaper solutions or cheaper products out there than the ones I was using, but I wanted to be completely honest with what I was using on screen in this project uh, so that was the best I could do. Putting the price aside, you guys should let me know which one was your favorite. Was it the phonetic art piece? Was it that drink table? Or was it my cute little tabletop candle? And I wanna know, could you see yourself making any of these projects? How would you change it up? Is there better materials out there that maybe I didn't think to use? Comment down below. I think my favorite project was definitely the phonetic alphabet piece. I have had my eye on that for so long and I'm so excited to see it on my wall. Like, ugh, it's just, it's so good. So what do you guys want to see me make next make sure you use the email in my description box to email me submissions of what you want to see me make for cheaper you guys know normally you are the one that chooses the items not me I was a bit selfish this time because I wanted these items for my home but I love when you guys send me your submissions and send them in get them to me and you might just see your project be made for cheaper. And of course, sending so much love to my Patreon family. If you are looking for a place of DIYers to root you on, to give you advice, or simply just kind of inspire you to make new things, then my Patreon is the place to be. Make sure you check it out. It is linked in my description box. And of course, my friends, as always, stay positive, stay creative, and keep on DIYing. Bye-bye.